Right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer, and then we'll get into our sessions. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for yet another day, O oh God. We thank you for this opportunity to come and learn at your feet. And I pray, God, that even as we learn, that you will speak to us, you will minister to our hearts. Lord, uh, bring new revelation, fresh strategies, ideas, uh, and plans, Lord, for the things that you have for us, O oh God. Lord, we come at this time into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so... We've come to chapter 14. So last class, we talked a little bit about the seven mountain assignment. We saw how there's a process and there are also, uh, you know, there's also challenges that would be involved. Uh, so wherever we are in the seven spheres, uh, any of the seven spheres of mountains or spheres of influence, we can make an impact. Now, Let's get into the growth and consolidation stage. So we saw different stages when it comes to church planting. Right? We saw the, uh, the stage where we are doing the background work. Then we saw the stage of uh, you know, we were planting. You see the natural dynamics. We saw the spiritual dynamics and when planting a church, how to get started. We saw that you, know, you need a core team to get started. Right, then you, we saw the survey stage. We do a complete survey of where we want to start the church or the ministry. Now, once you've finalized that place, we got into the preparation time or preparation phase. Now, the preparation phase is very important because that's where you're laying the foundation. right? And a good foundation is important for a building to stand. So this is where we do a lot of our preparation, our personal preparation uh, in our personal lives as leaders as a core team together to prepare, to plan, uh, you know, many, many things that we have to do. Then you come into the launch phase. We talked about the launch phase, right? You can start, you can have a big launch, or you can have just a simple launch. Uh, sorry, uh, you can have a simple launch with just, you know, uh, uh, inviting people on a Sunday morning. Then once the church has started, we need to develop strategies to reach out to the different spheres of influence in the society. Now, now, for example, it's about four or five years down the line, right? And your church is growing. It's come up to hundreds, 100, 150, 200 people. Now, there's a stage of growth and consolidation, right? That means what? You have, you're growing, but you're also consolidating. To consolidate is very important. You know, that means the word consolidate means to, is to strengthen what you already have, right? So we initial stage, we're doing outreaches, evangelism, everything. People are coming into church. Now you have, example, 200 people in church. You don't want these 200 people to come every Sunday and go, come and go, come and go. We don't want that. What we want to do is as we are expecting church growth, we also want to strengthen and consolidate what we have. It's not like 200 people come, okay, they finish church, go back home. No, we want to strengthen what we have. So in this chapter, we're going to look at the stages of growth when it comes to a local church, right? Um, just like a human body, right? So for example, there's a baby, six-month baby. Can you give the baby biryani to eat? Chicken and all kinds of meat to eat? No. Right? Why? Because firstly, the baby's organs are not yet developed for it to digest such a kind of food. Two, the baby doesn't have teeth to even bite that. Now it could cause a big problem right? if, if we forcefully feed a baby. So we must understand that, hey, as a baby, this is what he, he or she, the child can eat. Now, if we look at stages even in the natural, right? Once the child becomes one year old, what do you know, what do they do? They they give a little bit of solid food. Sometimes it's just you know hard, maybe a biscuit, right? So it's not only milk. Things change. Then two years old, something additional is added: rice, right? By three years old, they're having a full meal, right? So we need to understand 
that even in a local church, the church goes through stages. Now, even as we look at these stages, let's keep APC as an example, right? Our church as an example. Now, first stage, the pioneering stage. Now, as I said, you know, the pioneering stage is the initial stage, right? The church planting team and the leaders establish commitment. They 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 get together. They basically like a survey phase right you survey the whole place and where the lord has sent them we do the groundwork you do the prayer intercession reading reaching out um, uh, to communities in that place then it is the foundation laying stage you are going down instead of going up what does it mean a strong deep foundation is needed for good growth Jesus said it so beautifully. You know, everything that Jesus said, was a re there was a reason why he said it. Remember the wise and the foolish builders? Jesus said there was a wise builder. Everyone know that story, right? The wise and the foolish builder. The wise builder, what did he do? The, sorry, the foolish builder first. He said, okay, I'm going to build my house upon the sand. He built it. It looked nice. He was faster than the other person. But he built it. The rains came down, floods came, destroyed the house. It was gone. But the wise man said, hey, I don't want to be in a hurry. What I want to do is I want to build a good foundation. So he started you know, building a good foundation and he began to build this house. The rains came, the floods came, nothing happened to it. Now, which was easier? Building on sand or building on uh, good ground? You know, which was easier? Sand. Which is more comfortable? To, to build, which was more comfortable? Sand. Right? Because going down foundation is, is not easy. Right? You're going down, you're going to just dig deep and deep, and then you'll be waiting, oh, when is the building going to come up? Right? But the foundation is important. Now, in a church, we must ensure that we are not keeping our congregation comfortable always. When I say comfortable, I'm not talking about physically comfortable only. Like, we must be able to stir them up, right? Stir up their spirit. Now, the deeper you go, the deeper the foundation, the stronger your church will be. Now, what is the, you know, the, I would say, the challenge that we see now is a lot of young people take up this wonderful calling of starting a church or starting a ministry. But not all of them, some of them, they take up this calling and they're in a hurry to get to a certain level. Especially nowadays with uh, social media, and now we see churches, YouTube, and uh, you know Facebook, Instagram. We see what churches are doing, uh, big churches, and and so it's very easy to want to get there very fast. So we must understand that God works in seasons and we must learn to read time according to God's clock. Right? So the pioneering stage, spend as much time as you can laying a good foundation. Think of this. I'm just going to give you a few examples. Imagine you planted the church. It's two or three weeks in, into the church, right? You've got about 20 people in the church. Now, church starts at 9 a.m. Imagine you come at 9.15 or 9.10, the church starts. Nobody will say anything because it's a new, you've just started. But what will happen? People will think, 9 a.m. church, no, it's okay, we can also start at 9.15. Last week, pastor started at 9.15. Now what's happening? Foundation somewhere is weak. Now, another example. If there are, uh, you know, the church is there and suddenly you get upset and, and or, or we say something to the believers right, in the congregation. Now you're a small church. You get upset and say something rude or in a brash way. Now, what happens? The congregation is watching. It's only the starting stage, right? So you'll say, hey, this man looks like 
you know, he's going to be like a hard taskmaster and looks like he's going to put us all into you know trouble we don't feel like volunteering we don't want to feel like coming here people will go so as a leader your pioneering stage is important what you do now will last till the end something that i noticed work, working with you know just being here at apc for so many years is the word we do not compromise on the word and this is happening from day one the word of god should be preached we give a good 40 45 minutes for the word to timing if this is the time that is mentioned, we must give this time. We should follow this time, right? It's not like you can just uh, change the timing whenever we feel like. So now what's happening is just because we've done this, the pioneering stage, it flows into the congregation. Yes or no, right? Now, even here in Bible college, Nobody is there to tell you, start on time. Yes? Is there anyone coming, is the staff coming and saying, did you start on time? Will you start? Now, it just comes up. It comes because we have set this in place. And now, as students, you all know, hey, this is the time. This is the time we should start. If people come or no, that's OK. Right? So the pioneering stage is the stage where you will lay your foundation. You will set ground rules, not only for the congregation, but for yourself also. And these are the things as a church. This is our vision. This is what we do. So this is the stage where you can, you know, really let the church know what kind of ministry you want to see ahead. It is this stage. I remember many years ago. You know, as a as a you know, pastor used to say, one day I want to see, you know, people from all across India being part of our Bible college, people all across the globe being part of our Bible college. And we were very small, small Bible college, just doing what we are doing. But God made a way for that. Now, what what happened here? The vision was already laid a long time back. This is what we want to do. So your pioneering stage is where you can really get people together, form teams, really go with the vision of the church. Now, remember this. As a leader, if you are not passionate, the fire won't pass on. Get what I'm saying? Now, if I'm passionate or you are passionate about something, you will be able to you know, uh, give that desire or share that desire and passion with somebody else right and if you're passionate about music you'll also be passionate about others when you watch others learn and play you'll be there'll be some kind of satisfaction wow he's learned how to play right so this is the stage the pioneering stage very very important don't be in a hurry now we don't know how long a pioneering stage can be it can be two years it can be five years it can be 10 years also. But we don't want to be only on the pioneering stage. Imagine a baby only drinking milk. When you're five years old, if, imagine I go and give, give the bottle to my son and say, hey, drink milk. So why are you giving it to me in a bottle? Put it in a glass and give it to me. Say, that's your breakfast. Oh, milk, only one glass of milk is breakfast. I want breakfast. Give me something. Give me some sandwiches or give me some something to eat. Why? Because they're grown up. Right? When they're one year old, you give them a glass of milk, they're full. Oh, I'm full. So we must understand, we don't want to be in the pioneering stage always. So, for example, five years down the line, you've grown, you've gone to 200 people. Now, can you do alone everything when there's 200 people? No, definitely not. So what do you need? You need administration. You need organization. You need structure. Now, all of this as a leader, I should have already planned even before starting the church. But the mistake we should not make is we start the church, we do the pioneering stage. All of a sudden, you have 300 people come in the church. 
Now, you never know how church growth can happen, right? See, in you may start a church. In two years, you may have 200 people. You don't know. Now, you'll be surprised. 200 people are coming. Now, that time, you can't open a Word document and then say, OK, how to have an, a structure in the church, go to Google, try to, no, you can't do all that. You must be prepared well in advance. So the administrative, organizational, and structural stage. This is the stage where you define systems and processes to serve the people. Now, I would say personally, the moment you come up to maybe 70 to 100 people, you should have this in place. You should have it in place, right? How will I define systems and processes to make us serve the church congregation better? OK, what a system. Now, in APC, we have many things involved, right? So we have, firstly, sound and setup team. Now, you may not need that if you have your own space. You just need somebody in the mixer. Uh, you, you, then you have ushering. You need them. You need volunteers for welcome team. Right? Then you have uh, maybe car parking team. Now, not necessarily, but I'm just saying. Right? Uh, so you have different teams. Now, how do you get structure? One of the things we do is we have volunteer guidelines. Now, this is not the volunteer guidelines has didn't come in 2001. Right? Volunteer guidelines came after we used to you know appoint volunteers there used to be you know confusion should we do it this way should we do it that way can we appoint this person as a volunteer is it okay if he's attending church for one week is he is it okay if he's attending two churches is it okay if this person uh, is you know he's not coming regularly but he wants to serve only when he feels like now that became a problem so we needed guidelines if you want to volunteer, these are the areas. These are the guidelines that you must. One, this. You should, you should be a believer in the Lord. This is what you must do. This is what we are as a church. This is our vision. Um, you should stand with the leaders. You must be on time. You should be diligent when you're rostered. Uh, you must be there. No excuses. So there's a whole set of guidelines. Now those guidelines didn't come all of a sudden. It was after learning, making mistakes, learning from you know things that happened, right? Uh, problems that we had to solve, and then we thought, okay, it's better to make this plain so that people would understand, right? Assign roles and functions for various ministries that the Lord releases among your midst. Now, you started with a local church. Suddenly you may have ministries coming up. Now, eventually, you will have cell groups. You have to have cell groups as a local church. Now, you've got 200 people. You've got maybe 10 cell groups. Can you alone manage that? No. So now you need structure. You need volunteers. And now these volunteers are not just volunteers doing setup and all of that. These volunteers are going to be like leaders. So they must be spiritually mature they must know the word they must have some kind of understanding in the word so you assign roles and you assign functions so we have life groups so we need a life group coordinator 10 life groups this coordinator what must he do he must look after all the life groups speak to the life group leaders encourage life groups encourage people to join life groups right uh, identify new leaders, train new leaders, and release them to become uh, you know, uh, life group leaders. So what's happening? We are assigning a role. right? And even as you assign these roles, you establish godly standards and guidelines for each ministry. Example, for life groups, right? we have 43 life groups right now in APC. Each and every life group leader has attended a life group before. They are at least one year part of the church, and at least at least one year part of a life group before. So, for example, there'll be people who come to me and say, "I want to start a life group. There's no life group near my house." I'll say, "Good. 
But here are some things because there are guidelines. No, I can't say, oh, you know the you know the Lord for the last twenty years, you become a life group leader. No. So I, I first thing I say is, I, I I see. Okay, this person, we know him for the past five years, so he's part of church. One checklist is done. He's part of our church. Five years he's been with the Lord. Now two. First thing I ask him, have you been part of a life group? Now he may say yes or no. If he says yes, I am part of a life group. I can go ahead, right? I can say, okay, here's what we can do. We can take it the next step. If he hasn't been part of a life group, I'll tell him, see, you go be part of a life group. Understand how the life group works. Now, this again, this person may be five years in church or 20 years in the Lord, but I have to follow the guidelines. The guidelines doesn't change. It remains the same. So I tell him, you attend the church. Now, the moment the person, uh, sorry, attend a life group, the moment the person says, no, I don't want to attend a life group, that means what? Something is not right. Because right? sometimes people want leadership just for just to be recognized. Right? But that's a whole different story. But the moment he says, okay, I'll go be part of a life group. So we see, the, we see how he's growing. Then we train him, get him to be a life group. Right, so setting up godly standards now. Put processes in place when you have fifty people in attendance, which you will be able to maintain when you have five hundred or five thousand people. So important, no? Even if you have fifty people, set processes in place. Example: nine o'clock, eight thirty to nine fifteen worship. 9.15 to 9.30, announcements. FTV and announcements. First time visitors and then announcements. After announcements, 9.30 to 10 or 10.15 is your sermon. 10.15, ministry time, close 10.30. You've set it in place. So even if it's 50 people, even if it's 5,000 people, the format remains the same. Doesn't change. Right? Then new ministries can birth can be birthed by the Spirit in two ways. The Lord gives a vision of what needs to be done, and God stirs up people who will step in and carry out. And the Lord may raise or send people with certain gifts and callings that you may recognize. Now understand this. In 200 people, now your church is 200 people, you have people with different gifts, different talents, different skills, right? Now, two things can happen, how new ministries can start. For example, as a, as a, as a pastor of the church, I may feel, hey, somehow we need to step into colleges. How do I step into colleges? I need an open door here because these are teens. The moment we begin to minister to them as teens, by the time they get into you know, their early 20s and get into the workplace, we would have sowed seeds in their lives. Now, I have the burden. So I go up on Sunday and say, see, this is, a, this is something the Lord is stirring me. That we should do something in colleges. So if, there's any, if there are people here who are willing to join in this vision, you know, come and email us or call us. Let us know. And we will we can pray together and, uh, and pray and ask God to open doors for us. You see what's happening here? That is something that the Lord is stirring me. Now, you have another way where God will send people. Now, for example, in our church, we have quite a few people who are doing different things, right? Uh, uh, who, are, who have their own businesses. Right? We have a few of them who, uh, who work with NGOs. Right? And they meet with... They work with slum children. We have people who are in filmmaking. Like recently, we had the conference. Uh, uh, then we have people who are very good in music. So God will send people and give them a burden. right? And they take up that and lead that ministry. So you see the difference here. So either ways, ministries can be birthed. And when ministries are birthed, uh, again, we need to assign roles, set guidelines, and start off.
right? Do not start a ministry without guidelines. That's something that we learned at APC. Any ministry, it could be something very small, set guidelines. Because if there's guidelines, people will follow it. Right? Then, establish a reproducible model so that new church plants can replicate things and start quickly. Reproducible model. Now, you've planted the church. It's five years. Now you want to start a... Two of them from your church will say, Pastor, I stay very far off. I stay 15, 20 kilometers. Every Sunday I'm coming 20 kilometers away. Okay, where do you stay? I stay in the south of the city. Now, the Lord may put in your heart, why don't we use these young men and women and try to start a church plant that side of town so that these people don't have to come all the way here. Why should they travel 20 kilometers to come to church? We we'll make it in a way they have to just travel two or three kilometers. So now, then begins the groundwork. Remember the survey phase, all of that? You begin to do the survey phase. Survey, get a place, everything. But once you get a place, we already established. The mother church, the main church is already established. So we know what to do. Send three, four people. Or announce in church. See, we're starting a location here. It's in South Bangalore. This is the areas that we are targeting. So in church, those who are here, how many of you are willing to go and serve there? Uh, we need volunteers there. So what you do in the main church, same thing, replicate in the church plant. So for example, if you come to any location, not south, east, west, central, we follow the exact same thing. Nothing changes. Only thing, like in, uh, you know, a few things may not be there. For example, uh, uh, some one of some of our actually you no, know, all locations have a sound and setup team. Everything is there. Book table is there. Sound and setup team, ushering team, offering counting team. Everything. Each location when the offering comes in, there's a uh, the offering counting team makes a note of it in a ledger book. Everything is the same, right? Only thing now for the setup team, if you're doing it in a smaller location, they may not have a full band. So it's a small setup, but there's a team, right? Uh, well, whether it's life groups, whether it is a meeting. So for example, we have a, a men's ministry, a women's ministry. It's there if there's a meeting, they're on all locations. Right? It's not like only the main church will have it. No, all locations will have it. Right. Why are we doing this? Because we are, we want to ensure that all locations are one. We're not different. We are one church. right? So when there is administration, organization, and structure, you're, basically what you're doing is you have built the walls and you're strengthening the wall. Now think of it, you know, well, in a construction, when they build the wall, what do they do? They spray water on it, right? They put water on it. They, what does water do? It makes it solid and strong. Yeah. It becomes really strong. Now, what if I don't do that? What if I don't water? Now, at that time, you can just go on building. But years later, you'll find cracks. And from those cracks, seepages will start and water will start coming in also. Why? Because your walls are not strong. right? So this administrative stage, it's good. You know, one thing that we can do is even when you reach 200 odd people, 150, 200 people, you have to have staff. Right? Of course, you can do many things volunteer driven. But if you have a staff, a full time staff, it's, it's more, you know, it, it, it will be more successful. Your, your whole administration of and dealing with the organization as a church will become stronger, right? Now, after this is your pastoral stage, team ministry, and senior pastor stage. So 200, 300 people, 
Now, the one pastor is going every Sunday and preaching. We can't, we can't do that. Right? Remember, what do we want to do? We want to raise up leaders. We want to be a, a, a church that is raising up the next generation. So what do we do? We appoint pastors. Now, you got a mother church. If you have you know, other churches, uh, then you need pastors for obviously for each location. So for example, at APC for many years, right, we had volunteer pastors. So these are our church members who are faithfully serving in the church and uh, they are working in the workplace. But they were also pastoring the church. Right? So for many years that happened. So then you, we also had a team of people who would preach. So first, second, third, fourth Sundays, four Sundays. Right? So there were teams of people preaching especially in the location churches. Now, then comes the senior pastor stage. We begin to create room for pastors. We, we appoint pastors and the main pastor, the pioneer pastor goes into the senior pastor stage. So now you have senior pastor and associate pastors. But you can also have a senior pastor, an assistant pastor. And then associate pastors, under associate pastors, you can have assistant associate pastor and then team leaders, right? Now it all depends on how big the church is, right? For example, at APC East, we're about 130 odd people, right? Now the moment the church comes up to 200, 300, if required, we can have an assist, assistant pastor as well, if required. If not, we can just continue the way we are because we have a strong volunteer driven team. Right? So all the volunteers, team leaders, all of their member care, uh, member care team is there to look after the needs of people. So we have good teams in place, right? So again, we must understand what stage we are in, right? Now don't be in a hurry. Example, you have 50 people, don't go and appoint uh, one associate past, uh, assistant pastor one uh, worship pastor and three uh, and one one uh, administrator now with 50 people you have four staff how will you pay them you you got to understand where we are right now what level are we at there will come a time to go big right uh, the mistake we may feel is we are in a hurry to see growth and then we make these mistakes so no Wait accordingly, work right. Then we come into a very important stage equipping, building, and training stage. This is what uh, this is a stage that will be always a constant, right? Focus on equipping saints so that the entire church is mobilized to do ministry. Means what as a church, especially here at APC, we have this. We have this saying that we always like to follow. Every believer is a minister. Every believer. You can be in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Every believer is a minister. So you can and will get opportunities to minister to one another. Right? Um, it is no longer just the leader doing ministry, but everyone is involved. So you got the pastors involved and you got the entire church involving in ministry. Right. Now, again, this is where you and I, as the pioneers, we have to do a lot of work. We have to set the stage for this to happen. There's a reason why we play the announcements every Sunday every sunday so now it's there inside us the vision of all people's church is to be we know it by heart now it's it's something that we want our congregation to know right um 
emphasis on the supernatural ministry and moving everyone into realms of signs, wonders, and miracles. Now, this stage could be the Bible college stage. You can say, hey, I want to start a Bible college to equip people. Two, I want to do weekend schools. I want to train people. Right? Now, on a Sunday morning, you have a 45-minute sermon. You'll go back Monday to Friday. It's work. People go back to their work jobs and do whatever they have to do. But that is not enough. 45 minutes a week is not enough. So what can I do to equip the people? One is life groups. I'm raising up leaders through life groups. Now, life group also is there. Again, we need something more. Bible college. So people can come learn, take you know maybe three months. We used to have a three-month course uh, many years back. Three months, six months, then we made a one year, two years course. Right? So people who want can come and learn for a long time. Okay, not everyone can leave their jobs and come. Right? So what do we do? Weekend school. Initially, we used to do, um, it was called school of ministry. Right. So it was just a, maybe three or four hours on a Saturday. And we take a topic and talk about that. Right? And people would come and learn. Then we decided, hey, it's not enough. Topics like understanding the prophetic, uh, healing and deliverance, um, you know, uh, uh, worship, praise and worship, prayer and intercession. We need more time for this. So what we'll do is we'll do full of Saturday. That's the whole Saturday. Right? We'll take a place. We'll get food. We'll get people to register. And then we'll do a whole day. Then from there it went to. So in, anyways, they're coming on Saturday. Why don't we do it even on Sundays? Right. And so we used to have weekend school whole of Saturday, whole of Sunday. Right. And then we changed it back to only Saturday. But the point is, we are doing all this because we want to equip, we want to build people up. Right. Then we have conferences, right? Youth conference, men's conference, women's conference, all the conferences that we are doing, Christian leaders conference. Right. So now we are saying, hey, I want to also not only help in my church, but also raise up leaders elsewhere. Right. So the senior pastor focuses on equipping and imparting, while much of the pastoral care is provided by the other pastors. Right. So as a senior pastor, you know, sometimes people say, as once I grow up in ministry, I have nothing much to do. No, it's the other way around. The higher you go, the more the responsibility. The higher I go, the more I should say, hey, who are the leaders that I'm able to raise up to take on the task that has to be that's on hand? There's a lot of things to get done. So the church begins to penetrate the community and catches the vision for missions. So you build people up, you equip them, you train them, and then you send them out. And we say send them out, don't know. It's not like we're saying go out of church, but wherever you are, be a person who can equip and uh, build people up. Believe believers are ministering to one another and to the world. And I think we are in this four and five stage as a church, four and five. See, what we want to do is we want to equip every believer to be a minister. We want each and every one to grow up in the ways of the Lord. Now, remember, even as we do this, there will be challenges. Right? There will be challenges that we will face. People may not grasp your vision. People may get upset. People may not really understand what's in your heart. Uh, again, people may take you wrong. So all of these things will happen. But we must ensure that our hearts are pure before God. Ensure that the main motive of ministry is to raise up leaders. Right. Now, look at look at Bible College, for example. We've been doing this since 2005. Right. And for so many years, you know, we've trained, we, we have taught so many, so so many students, many, many students. Many of them have gone back to their hometowns, and sometimes they message me. They message us as staff, they message and say, uh, th these are the pictures of the ministry that I have started, and these are, and we are so happy. Now they have, they are nowhere connected to APC. They're doing their own ministry, but we know that hey, we have done the equipping, 
we have built them, we have trained them to be leaders, right? And so this equipping, building, and training stage is something that we do first in the church and then release it out outside of the church. And that's where missions come in, right? That's why we are doing both. If you look at us, APC as a church, we are on point four and on point five. We are in between this. We are equipping our people. We are sending out four missions. So the last youth uh, conference that we had in uh, Hyderabad, you saw all the youth were sharing, right? And it was so wonderful. Like, you know, I was so amazed by our youth. They were 22, 23, young boys and girls, so young. But they stood with such confidence, well prepared, and they thought, right? They thought about these uh, great missionaries. And it's not easy to do that, right? And we want to see, didn't, you know, they, during that stage, people may make mistakes, but we help them, we help them to learn, we build them up, we grow, but we never know. Now, 10 years down the line, at this age, they're doing so well. Imagine 10 years down the line, how well they'll be. So now if I don't, as a leader, as a pastoral team, we must nurture that. Yes, see, we see people, we give them opportunity, hey, he preached so well. You see, hey, he can become a good leader. The way he speaks, the way he is command in English, the way he's giving his examples, the way he's, you know, uh, just preaching with so much confidence. The anointing is there. It looks like God has called him for that. So as leaders, we must be able to water that. Now, if I don't give that person opportunities, what will happen? It's like you're taking a gift that God is giving and pushing it down, suppressing it. And this person may feel, hey, you're not getting any opportunities. But that should never be the case. We create opportunities for people. Right? Even in life groups, uh, we something that we always say is give everyone an opportunity to speak. The life group leader only guides the discussions. But everyone gets to speak. What did you learn about? Oh, the beast, the antichrist, the false prophet. Okay, that's the question the life group leader will ask. Now, everyone should be able to talk. Everyone should be able to give in their inputs and learn. Right? So, as leaders, there's a responsibility on us. We must look at gifts and talents that God has placed and encourage them. Right? Okay, the fifth stage the apostolic function stage now the apostolic mindset is a outward focus rather than a internal care now understand this over the years you've grown up maybe 500 people in church now you have one you have two aspects you have the organization you have the ministry right as an organization you have administrator you have staff, you have events coordinator, you have everything set. Everything has been as an organization. So for example, for a conference, there's an organizational team. They'll do everything. So here in APC, what do we do? OK, we want to have a conference. So the event coordinator, Stephen, he will call the check for places, call the map, get the budget. OK, whole day conference. This is the budget for the food and the tea and the snacks. And uh, the, this is the this is a 200 seater hall. This is what. It, so then we what do we do as pastors, whoever is preaching or teaching? We are not worried about is the hall booked? Is the promotions happening? We are not worried about all that. We will just send all the details. This is the topic. This is this uh, agenda. Session one, session two, break entire agenda. Now, all of that, the IT team, media team, graphics, everything is done by the organizational team. What am I doing if I'm going to be teaching or preaching on that day? I'm preparing. I'm looking at spiritual care. I'm not worried about that. So remember this. Uh, we, we, we have two parts. We have the organization part. We have the uh, ministry part. Right Now, as the church is growing, the senior pastor has leaders under him, right? 
he has associate pastors he under the associate pastors he has leaders he has team leaders he has ministry leaders everyone are there so now he's not going into all this minute details right example now our senior pastor doesn't ask did you have communion on sunday was it was it enough for everyone communion did you preach 45 minutes on sunday did you did you do it the right way did you do this did you do... he's not going to check all of that 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 stage is over i told you you know uh, 2000 and i think 2010 the first time he gave me to, you know i was i was asked to preach was i think it was the apc north first time i preached he came and sat in front i got very nervous right but there's a reason he came and sat why this is first time so it's church okay he sat he listened to the whole sermon okay this is the feedback this is that's it after that he's not not coming every time and sitting right so you, we must understand that as as we grow even the the senior pastor level things will change now he's apostolic in nature what to do outside right now in the church it's not like he's he or she is not interested in, in the church now no remember this is the heart of the ministry everything flows out of the main church right because all the funds the 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 ministry is carried out from the main church the senior pastor and others are more to free to go out and gain new territory for the kingdom of god meaning they can look at other options you know some things that we have in mind is uh, world missions am i going to put that into plan in 2025 mostly we're talking about it already right where we can go out different parts of the country Now, let me tell you something many places in different countries there may be churches but they may not have teachings like what we have I'm not saying ours is the best teaching or something but there are places where people need this kind of teaching they need to understand kingdom mindset kingdom builders uh, you know local church how to raise up local church how to raise up leaders so much that is involved right so we are looking at that the church also begins to actively reproduce itself in regions beyond believers have an apostolic mindset and are ready to sacrifice go to new places and the local church becomes a missions base rather than a spiritual nursery the word spiritual nursery means it's not like we're only caring for the members at inside our church it becomes a missions base come on we got to go there are places that we have to go there are new territories now look at our nation 1.3 billion people is there a need so much need so much need for people for us to teach people to so much of ground yet to cover and so we want to we are in these two stages right and eventually we become a self sustaining church right a establish ongoing discipleship uh, equipping believers and become financially stable i want to just say this and then we'll take a break for example the entire pastoral team says we are going on a break for 6 months example right will everything happen the same way in apc what do you feel chira says no no all the only the pastoral team we all I'll say okay we all are going for 6 months on a break will the church and all the locations function normally only the pastors huh? everything else is there. only the pastors and the associate pastors are going will everything function normally definitely it will we've got people who can go and preach in central we have people who can preach in all other locations we've got all the volunteers ready we don't have to tell them okay sound and setup team you have to come at 6 am no they know it we can be in another country all of us everything will go on bible college we can assign people come and teach we have people it's not that we don't have we have 43 life group leaders they can come and teach right 
So that's what we want to see. That's where we are at. But we want to see this continuing, reproducing, reproducing, right? Let's take a break. We'll come back.